Well, hey everybody, it's Chuck. Coming at you from my road trip on my way to uh, Louisville, Kentucky for a beekeeping conference, the North American uh, Honey Bee Expo. Anyway, I thought I'd just bring you along with me today. I am in uh, Murfreesboro, Tennessee Supercharger. It's just north of Chattanooga on the way to Nashville. And uh, just to kind of show you, V4s. These are the first V4s on my stop so far. Um, and I came in to the uh, charging stop with about 15%, 13%. And yeah, I'm getting 252 kilowatt hours on these right now. Uh, but these V4s are so much nicer for the Cybertruck because they have these longer cables. Uh, in this particular location, you can access from either side. So you don't have to all be next to each other and the cables are long enough to effectively uh, go around, you know, from either side. So you could use, it works really, really good. I could even probably use this one in the wrong spot. Um, this is what I wanted to show you from the, these V4s. Anyway, the uh, other things I wanted to show you that I'm using on my road trip, this is my first road trip uh, by myself, meaning like did have other people in the car and how I've configured it. And I'm kind of doing this road warrior style. Um, I drove about six hours to about 1130 last night, uh, charged up, went to a rest stop and pulled over and slept in the truck with camp mode. It's my first experience with camp mode. But what I want to show you is what I installed in here is one of these large pickup back seat mattresses. This is not specific for the Tesla Cybertruck, but I guess to all the uh, accessory manufacturers, maybe you should make one. Uh, this is generic for a large pickup truck type of bed, and it's two pieces. So this is an inflatable part down there that's designed to fill up the leg portion. Um, but it actually has a little cutout for what would be the transmission hump of a large pickup truck. Don't really need that in a Cybertruck. You could have it completely flat to give that even better support. And then this mattress here pretty, pretty much fits the whole way across, uh, leans a little bit. And then of course I just brought my own pillow with a little bit of a, a throw blanket. And it slept pretty good. I'm five foot ten and a half and shrinking. Um, and I can go diagonally pretty comfortably. Uh, you cannot get two people back there. You could probably get one adult and a child. Uh, you know, if you're below five five, you're probably gonna be able to go head to toe, no problem. Uh, you know, over five nine, you're gonna need to go at an angle a little bit. But it's very comfortable in camp mode. Um, I started, it was about 32 degrees last night. I was in a rest area and uh, between 11.30 at night and 5.30 in the morning. So about six hours, I lost about 10% battery just keeping the camp mode going uh, for the temperature controlled at about 69 degrees uh, for sleeping. But anyway, I love that accessory. A couple other things I wanna talk about just while I'm on the road here is this Jawa uh, Qi charger from my iPhone is awesome. Uh, I love their products. They're really high quality. It's got this metal, the magnet is strong. And the most important part I want to tell you is they gave me a cable that was long enough to go down, under, way up underneath this floor mat, all the way back to plug into the back USB-C outlet. Um, and I'm able to go to both landscape and vertical mode pretty easily by just rotating it a little bit. Uh, so if I've got Waze up and running, it's right there at my eyesight. And if I'm poking at the phone, like you probably shouldn't be while you're driving on FSD, but when you do, that camera is forward of this um, uh, attention monitoring camera. So you don't get busted every three seconds like you do if you're looking at a phone or tapping a phone down here in this lower charger. Uh, I like the location mostly because it's line of sight and my eyes are looking forward uh, with it. Loving the hand show rear view camera. Uh, I do have to say at nighttime, uh, when everything gets dark, I end up turning it off a little bit more because of the glow and things up here. I kind of like a darkened ship, like I'm in a flight deck. Uh, so I do turn it off at night a little bit more. I also have this tilt mod installed now. And the tilt mod is coming in handy just for the better angle and looking at the screen and swiping. This upper right hand corner for my uh, arm length is a little tough. Tilting the screen over makes it just a little bit better. Uh, I, have, I have a couple other things to show you, believe it or not. Um, I do want to say when you're doing a road trip, put the luggage that you're going to need to go into any hotels or things um, in your frunk. 
that's my uh, pilot uh, kit bag and there's a jacket and believe it or not even though it's coming out all the way here and the latch is there it fits further forward than it does higher and it closes without a problem uh, that's where you want to put your gear that you need to grab a jacket you don't want to go digging in your Cybertruck uh, back seat if you don't have to or I mean the uh, actual bed if you don't have to um, I've got this Weber small refrigerator that uh, was sent to me and I've got it plugged into the outlet in the forward console and I got it chilled down to 37 degrees it'll go all the way to super cold um, I don't know if you need a refrigerator but I know there are a lot of people especially diabetics that need to keep their stuff cold uh, need a refrigerator this is keeping things very cold and there's plenty of room in there for one person for sure um, but having that 110 outlet to run refrigerators like this uh, is pretty handy and it fits on that floorboard and I can reach it while FSD is driving very very easily uh, so that's the Vever refrigerator uh, I could try to pull the number off of it but it's pretty easy to identify it's this kind of angular blue and gray one but with a raised lid this raised lid gave a little bit more vertical volume and you can kind of see in here that vertical volume it gave you I do have my bag with my glasses and everything like that and in that seat it's so heavy i have to have the seat belt connected to it because it thinks it's a person uh i thought that was noteworthy uh i did want to show you for pumping up that mattress i do i don't have a spare tire i do keep one of these pumps and if you don't own this is your spare tire unless you're calling tesla service or being towed if something happens uh, one of these pumps will get you uh, unless you just have an extreme blowout you know off of a slow leak or allow, allow you to keep rolling and get to safety uh, and also it, it adds for the pump for that big mattress because it's got the uh the air hose on it the one important thing you need to recognize as a Cybertruck owner is you've got to get a 110 pump most every other air pump on the market including some of tesla's uh you know have the 12 volt outlet for the model 3 and the y s and x but uh, the Cybertruck has the 110 you need to make sure you find that one and something about this size i got this one off amazon avid power i don't know uh, it fits right down in there pretty well so i, I just something i thought you'd want to know you know using either this outlet or the outlets in the in the bed uh, are good i do have those cyber truck cargo bins uh, i do love them i love them forward of the cargo carrier because they kind of make it a half a bed um, and the reason i think you need some sort of bin storage if you're going to do a road trip is because the vault is not waterproof you go through a rainstorm or a lot of water there are drips in here it's not soaking wet but it would get like a, my luggage it would get wet in in this location uh, if i went through some rain so you can throw luggage in here you can throw anything you don't want to get wet get it out of the way it's like a whole second trunk um and they fit really good they're a little bit expensive no they're a lot expensive uh i'm not gonna even say a little bit they're expensive uh I don't think you need to get Tesla's um, cargo bins if you don't want. You can get something from Costco that just won't fit perfectly three across. You get one that fits two across or go make a little diagram and it'll work just fine. That's all you need. But the point is, is have some sort of closable storage for things that you don't want to get wet um, in the back. And I will also say my pilot flight bag will not, the, 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 the carry-on luggage will not fit in this bin because these bins are a little bit narrower than a typical tub so that might actually be a downside in order for them to get three across they went a little bit narrower than a typical uh, tub of that kind of height um, and my, my bag won't fit in there it actually goes in vertically at an angle and then the lid did go on and that's how I ended up trying to fit it up front so anyway the truck is doing great I'm getting um, with this load I've got meaning of the gear and the refrigerator the luggage and stuff like that I'm uh, getting around 520 to 540 kilowatt hours uh, per mile. I think I can show you here. What was this last trip? Yeah, 532 was where I ended this last one. I, you know, I guess I should also say, in this back seat area, I do have the Starlink mounted. Uh, so the Starlink is pulling power. The refrigerator is pulling power. And remember, Starlink uses that um, USB-C. Uh, PD power delivery protocol so it may be drawing a lot of power um, oh and this is the last tip and then I'm gonna sign off when I was sleeping at the rest stop last night I got all comfortable I was fine 
But rest areas are pretty well lit. And I found these blaring overhead lights coming straight through the glass into my eyes. And I was like, gosh, it's like daylight out here. Then I remembered, well, in the flight deck, we carry these um, things that stick to the glass. Because you can see through them, but they also stick to the glass and you can move them as the sun moves, the sun rises and falls, or as you turn and navigate through the skies, we move them around to the different windshields to kind of block out the sun, much like you would for a, a baby in a baby carrier blocking out the sun. These are made, and sold on Amazon by a company called Kinder Fluff. And I'll tell you, every pilot has them now, Kinder Fluff. They make little ones and they make a little bit bigger ones. These are the smaller ones. And boy, were they nice to have last night because not only while I was sleeping in the bath, I could sort of, make these like they were dark tinted and anybody you know gawking to see what the Cybertruck was like and see me sleeping in there which I was trying to avoid really couldn't but more importantly they created an additional blind for uh, the overhead lighting uh, and I was able to mount one to the interior glass kind of right where that um, light was and then I had a couple of these mounted on the glass and they stick pretty well one side is this kind of sticky plastic and the other side is this black mesh so that's a shout out to Kinderfluff for making these for pilots. And I thought for the road warrior trying the uh, camp mode in back of a cyber truck, it gives you a little bit more privacy if you haven't already dark tended your truck and or you need to just block out something extra bright like a light. Anyway, that's my update from up here north of Chattanooga. Uh, gonna be at the B conference later on today. If uh, anybody is watching this is gonna be at the B conference, make sure you say, hey, I'd uh, love to meet all of my Tesla cousins and all of my uh, honeybee friends. Hope you guys have a great day. Uh, appreciate uh, watching the video and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.